Well, the time has come to now paint the trees. I've done the blocking part. Uh, I've done the darker glaze on top of these trees here. Now I'm going to do the canopies. Uh, I think I'm going to use, well, I'm going to start with the fan here, Series 27. Um, okay, let's mix the colour, see if we can get it to look roughly like trees. Fairly hopeful. Let's have a look, see how we get on. So that's a light green. Actually, why don't I mix in some green? Let's get a bit of, oh man, man alive. It's blocked, my tubes are blocked. That's better. Right. So that is phalo green, yellow shade, I believe. It's a really, really strong green. That, so you don't need too much of it. What I do is I mix and hold it up against the photograph. You know, try and get the color as near as I can and then come back, maybe add a little bit more of something else. Let's start here. I think that's fairly close colour-wise. So I'm just using the corner of this brush and it's given me a sort of a, a canopy shaped brush mark, so it works pretty well. So I'm going to cover the whole of this area here now, changing the colours slightly as I go, but the technique is going to stay the same.
I'm doing here now is just putting on a darker glaze and I'm using Liquin, an ivory black. I'm just doing a stipple over this tree here and it's basically it's going to give me that, it's going to fill in the shadows, the shaded areas and give the illusion that there's far more detail in there than there actually is. I'm going to go over the whole thing lightly and then I'll go back over it and I'll just focus on the areas where it is a little bit darker and just darken those so they're more of a solid, a solid sort of dark area. Probably what I'll do with this is I'll go over this whole area. Let's just zoom out a little bit. Whoa. I'm just gonna go over this whole area here doing this stipple effect. Um, then concentrate on the dark of it and then go over it with the with the um, highlights after that. I'm really doing this quite lightly. I don't want it to be too big a smudge. I'm just just touching it and it's giving you lots of tiny little brush marks. Let's get some of these canopies on here now. Going back with the fan brush, at least for the time being. I'm gonna just line it up a little bit. I received this package today from Rosemary & Co. And inside we have some brush samples. Now these are, these are the brushes that I use. So these are samples that I've received. Um, and I'll just show you what you get when you purchase a set from Rosemary & Co. So, with the professional set, you are getting a myriad of fan brushes of varying sizes. 
we get brushes that I use for blocking in. The fan brushes I tend to use for things like grass, um, leaves, things like that. We've got more detailed brushes, so we've got riggers here, and uh, I'm not sure what you call those. Anyway, for fine detail. Two sizes of rigger, one and zero. There's the short flat hogs that I use for leaves and foliage and things like that. Oh, now these are good brushes. These are comas. Don't know whether you can see they've. Uh... See that? Anyway, they're good for grass and things like that. Very good brushes. Also, you can use them for leaves and things. Uh, it's just a smaller brush for doing smaller detail blocking in. And this is one of my favourite brushes. This is the Tree and Texture brush, which is really, really brilliant. Um, anyway, so you get in all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen brushes in that set. I'm not sure how much it is. Sixty something pounds, I think. Um, but you also get a top-up set, so the brushes that are likely to wear out a bit quicker, um, you can buy a small set of those, or of course you can buy them all individually. So, um, But if you're wanting to know what brushes I use, you want to use the same brushes that I use, then there you go. Probably should have mentioned the email address, which is www.rosemaryandco.com.